Hi everyone, Janie here, and in yesterday's Valentine video, I used this Coca Rosa Hollow Heart Cutting Die from In Love Arts to make this beautiful Valentine. And as much as I love how this turned out, I kept thinking this would really make a great shaker card, and so I had to come back today with another video, and I am going to walk you through the making of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is emboss a piece of white cardstock with this Sizzix embossing folder. Um, I love it because it has little hearts on it, but I don't know the name of it. I've just had it for as long as I can remember. And I'm just going to run that right through my cuddle bug here. And It is so pretty. Okay, now just wait a minute. Okay, I got my seat plate now because we're gonna be doing some die cutting with that hollow heart cutting die. And I put it right in the center area that did not get embossed. And normally I would do the die cutting first only because it can flatten out the embossing. But I needed to know where I was putting that die, otherwise I would be cutting in the wrong place. Okay, with that out of there, there is still embossed design on there, but if you want, you can always stick that back in the embossing folder, kind of line things up because it'll fit right in and you can just run it right through again. But I'm not gonna do that right now because I have something else that I need to be die cutting. Okay, off camera, I did run this through the embossing folder again to make the embossing a little bit deeper. So that is done. And now I'm going to be using this red glitter cardstock from Close to My Heart. And I have lined the back of that with double-sided tape because the, um, the die cut is so thin and intricate and I don't have a fine tip glue bottle to do this with. So I did that so that it'll be sticky on the back for me. And by the way, the um, other piece that I cut out, I can save that and use that for another project. So let me get this lined up, make sure I've got it on my, yep, there's the tape, okay. Wanted to make sure everything was where it needed to be. And I am gonna run this through. Now with um, the glitter cardstock, I do have to run it through a couple of times and it is not the die's fault. It doesn't matter which die I use with that glitter cardstock. So I'm going to run that through a few times and let's see what we get. Okay, I'm not going to take this apart right now. I'm going to wait until I need it because if it, you know, is all sticky, I don't want to ruin it. So I should have waited, but I was doing all the die cutting right now. And I just wanted to get that part done and over with. So I'm going to set this aside and I'll be back with the next part. So next I'm going to be making a shaker pocket and you can buy shaker pockets pre-made like this from Cat Scrappiness. but. What I need today is not that size, and so I'm going to be making a custom shaker pocket, and I will show you how to do that. And I'm going to be using this um, True Bind Premium Binding, I guess whatever. Basically, what it is is like acetate sheets, so they're clear sheets like that. If you don't have something like that, another thing I like to do is save the packaging that craft supplies come in like you know stamp sets and things like that because those work great as well so let's get started so to make a custom shaker pocket first of all you're going to need an insert for it and right now i'm just using a plain pink one in a previous one i used this glitter paper you can use a patterned paper or even something that has words on it. Totally up to you, but you'll need an insert. And so first find out what size your insert is. And mine is four by five. And so I needed my shaker pocket 
piece, the um, acetate or whatever you're using, to be one inch bigger each direction. So now this is five by six. So one inch bigger each direction. And let me remove this little tissue paper part here. And then what you're going to do is score it a half an inch on each side. And that's what takes up that one inch. So now the inside of your shaker pocket is going to be the same size as your insert. So and get this done here really quick. But you can do this with literally any size you want. All you have to do, like I said, is know the size of your insert and then make this one inch bigger and then score it a half an inch on each side and we're just going to be folding it in on those score lines and let me show you here in just one second that it now will hold my insert piece so, I already started adding my double-sided tape to the inside, but I forgot I needed to cut the squares out of these corners. You just cut right on the score lines, which are very obvious to see, and just cut all the squares, and then you're going to be adding tape to each side, like I said, on the inside. and. Once you've added the tape, this next step is easier to do, in my opinion, after adding the tape, and that is just kind of mitering the corners here a little bit, which, you know, basically means you're just cutting a little sliver triangle off, like so, and so it looks like this now, and I'm going to do that all the way around. Okay, now that this is done, it is time to start putting the pocket together. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out is when you are adding the tape, the double-sided tape, get it as close to the score line as you can, but don't go over the score line, don't put it on the score line, just get it as close as you can. Okay, so, also, I have a fabric softener sheet here, and I like to use that on the inside of all of my shakers, whether they're shaker pockets or the traditional shaker. I just like using the fabric softener sheet on it to help with the static electricity that can happen. So I'm putting this in there and because mine is plain it doesn't matter, but if yours had a design on it, the design goes face down. So I'm just going to put that right in there and I'll start by removing the backing of the tape and even though that is tape I do like to add just a little bit and I usually try to maybe put a few dots or go along the back of the um, the insert piece just to actually I think I'll add a little bit more over here just to give it a little bit extra hold I just feel that wet glue does a much better job of that than double-sided tape because double-sided tape after time can come apart okay so I'm gonna do this all the way around but not all the way around I'm gonna leave this end open and you will see that in a minute but for right now I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this off camera and then I will be right back okay I have three sides all glued down and I left one side open and I wanted to show you how those mitered corners fold over each other and they overlap but they make it easier to fold and actually I'll show you here well there's still a white strip on here so you can see what the corner looks like that's what it does alright so now it is time to add the shaker bits and what I like about this is that you don't have you know sequins and stuff going everywhere it will be contained in there you'll be able to see how much you have it is so much easier than regular shakers and I'm going to be using this shaker mix here it has reds and pinks and there's actually some hearts in there and I thought it'd be perfect for a valentine and I have no idea where I got this from it has been in my stash for years and years and years and I honestly have no clue where it came from so let me grab a little spoon 
And I'll use that to grab some of these out. It'll just be a bit, little bit easier. So, put some in there. Oh, look at there's some of the hearts. I don't know if you could see that. I'll try to get it up there so you can see little hearts. Okay, let me take a look. See, I can close the top now and I can shake it around and go, ooh, that looks good, but maybe I'll put in a tiny bit more. So let me grab some more, there's some more hearts. Okay, I think that's more than enough. I have the tendency to add way too many and I don't wanna do that. So we're gonna stop there and hope that it's the right amount. I don't know about you, but sometimes doing shakers, it's like, am I getting too much? Am I not getting enough? You know, how am I, you know, how's it gonna work out? So my shaker's ready and it is time to seal this. And by the way, I hope you noticed, there are not sequins everywhere, there is not a mess. And it was really nice to be able to see how much I had in there by just flipping the, the top of this over and shaking it around. So I really love shaker pockets. They make making shakers a lot more easy, a lot more fun and a lot less messy. Okay, so, oh, look at that. Well, no one's gonna see it. I just bent the upper part right here of my, um, of my insert, but no one's gonna see that, so we're good. So, there is my shaker, and everything, as you can see, just shakes around so beautifully in here, so. Now it's time to start putting things together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to adhere my shaker pocket to the center of the front of my card. And to do that, I'm gonna be using a combination of wet glue and double-sided tape. So let me put that on here. And... You can use all double-sided tape if you wanted to, or you could use all wet glue if you wanted to. But I like to do a combination because I just think, okay, I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> I think that double-sided tape is really awesome and it is like an immediate hold. And I think that wet glue is stronger and it gives you wiggle room, but it takes a little bit longer for it to completely dry. And so if you use a combination of them, you have the um, double-sided tape to hold things in place while your wet glue dries. I hope that makes sense to you, but it makes sense to me because once I put this on there, like I said, it's gonna, it's going to hold from the double-sided tape and the wet glue will just hold it even stronger. You have to trust me on this. I've been doing this for years. Trust me. Okay, so let me get this centered on here. And you will notice that there's a little bit of extra space top and bottom than there is on the sides, but it's the same with this. So everything is going to just work perfectly. Let me move those shakers down, see if I can press down on this side a little bit more. Oh, look at that, it moved. Well, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna be seen, so we are good. Just make sure that everything is attached. And so the next thing is to put this over the front. And I know you're wondering, what about that gap in the middle? Well, yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing with this. So it's gonna be inlaid and it's gonna be beautiful. So for this, I am using only wet glue. And actually, let me clean the top of that off there a minute. I love beacon, do you see that? I just rolled it up and sat it down. You can't do that with uh, white glue. Okay, so let's see here. This is the front. I will be putting my glue here on the back and I really don't want to bore you with this part of it so I will probably either speed this up for you or I'll just cut it out and 
come back when it's done. Honestly, I did not need to put glue on the corners because it's not going to be glued flat. So I have no idea what I was thinking, but it was important that I put glue in the other areas. And it's also important that I make sure that if there's any glue strings, that I remove them before I try laying this down. Okay, so I've got to be over the top of this to lay this down. And I really want to do this on camera for you because I always do a lot of things off camera where I don't want my head in the way. And this is kind of one of those things. So, hold on a second here while I set it upright. Making sure that all of my edges are smooth. Okay, now I'm gonna just push everything into place, making sure that all of the glue is attached. Okay, I think it's all on there really good. That is the one thing when you're doing something like this, it's not like how I would normally do this. I mean, when you do a shaker, I would put something over the top like this with an opening, but usually not something that is embossed so that there's areas that may not stick or little skinny areas like this that are going in. But it's done, okay? Well, that part of it's done. Now it's time for me to peel this off and I'm gonna have to do this very slowly, so I'll be right back. Okay, wish me luck. Um, part of me wanted to leave it in the die and lay the die on it and then pull it up, but this was sticking in there so badly that I just had a feeling it was gonna turn into a disaster if I did that. So I am just slowly and carefully fitting these pieces right back to where they belong. And seriously wish me luck. I've done inlay many times. I have actually done one of my Tuesday two minute tips and tricks videos on doing inlaid shakers. But not quite like this. Um, I you know, used other glues and I've had pieces that weren't quite as delicate as this. Oh my gosh, I did it. Oh, I am so thankful I got it done. Okay, I just wanna make sure that everything is really pushed down good because it's only double-sided tape on there. There is no wet glue or there is no spray adhesive or anything, just the double-sided tape. What do you think? So, hold on a second, that's it without the shaker pieces, and then you can shake it and get the shaker pieces in there, and I love the way this came out. Seriously, when I saw this die, you know, I thought, oh, how perfect for a shaker card, but then my first Valentine video that I made with it, I didn't use it as a shaker card, and I am so happy with how this turned out. To finish off the card, I cut out this heart from the In Love Arts Valentine theme stamp and die set. And actually, it is this die that I used, so it cut out the heart wreath, I guess you would call it, and the centerpiece, and I'll be able to use this on another card. And it comes with the dies to cut out the hearts and the flowers, and it comes with lots of sentiments that I can use on the inside of the card. And then I cut out the word love and put that on there. That's from just some random die that I had laying around. The same with this little heart up here. I just thought those really just went well with all the hollow hearts. And I just thought it was so perfect, just the perfect way to finish it off. And I popped those up with these 3D foam squares. And 
normally I probably wouldn't because this is just not going to work. Well, I think it might fit in a card. The, um, the shaker part actually folds flat. Um, I don't know how I can really explain that. You'd have to see it. Unlike other shakers with all the foam tape around them and everything, this will actually fold flat. And so I don't know if I should have popped those two pieces up or just left them flat, but it doesn't matter to me because I will probably be handing this to someone in person. So there is my finished card. I love it. I will be putting some pictures here on the screen. Thank you all so much for stopping by today. I hope that you like my shaker card and the techniques that I shared. And if you're interested in the In Love Arts hollow heart cutting die that I used or the In Love Arts Valentine's Day theme dies and stamp set, I will have links below to both of those as well as a 25% off discount code to In Love Arts should you decide to shop there. Happy crafting everyone. Bye bye.